I think the central and most important technique, if you're interested in measuring well-being, is people's own evaluations of their life and their own reports. Um, but the other variables, the other approaches are really important because suppose you find out that some people are happy and some aren't. You want to know why they're happy. In order to know that, you have to know all about their life, which will include their family and their friends and their income and their physical health. Focus groups are sometimes good for giving you an insight into how people are thinking. Most of the science of well-being around the world is done with the survey kind of information. And another group is done with experimental, whereby you actually change life in some way for people and then see how it works for them. Uh, one school gets the program that's supposed to improve well-being, another gets the standard program, and you wait till the end of the year. You see how well they do in their exams, but you also see how happy they are. That is uh, something we will learn more about when Mexican data themselves are more general, so you'll find out where is it in Mexico and what sorts of Mexicans are happier than others, and so you'll learn more of the detail. At the moment, it's true for these Gallup World Poll evaluations that Mexico has quite a bit of unexplained happiness so that we have a country called dystopia, which would be what would happiness be if you had the world's lowest values of everything, and that's a two. And then we explain all the rest of happiness by how there are a whole lot of variables, six important ones, and then we have a remaining bit of an actual measure of Mexican happiness that isn't explained by this dystopia two, or the other variables. And that extra bit for Mexico is about one out of 10. Uh, now about half of that comes from Mexico sharing with other Latin American countries. A bit of a boost. Whether it's a boost in life, in the streets, in the families, in the homes, or just the reaction in, uh, to questionnaires, I think it's something real that's in the societies and Mexico shares that with a lot of its partners in Latin America, but, uh, but Mexico's got an extra bit on top of that, so that'll take some unpacking. Uh, but it does mean, of course, that Mexico's got a lot of potential to improve these other supports for life that we know are not as good as they are in the other top countries. Well, I mean, of those six variables, a couple of them are pretty standard, like GDP per capita and healthy life expectancy, and we have many organizations working to improve those in every country. But then you move to ones that are more responsive to the kind of research people are talking about at this conference. Uh, people uh, like to be able to feel they have freedom in making their key life decisions. Uh, people are really, it's really important that they feel they have people to call on in times of trouble, social support. Honesty is very important. Trust, the ability to uh, not have to worry about your back and to have your wallet returned if it was dropped in the street. That's very important. All of those, uh, that, those could be higher than they are in every country, but in, they're, they're lower in Mexico than they are in other top countries. And finally, generosity, the extent to which people do things for others. And the measure used in the Gallup World Poll is donations adjusted for the income level of the country. Um, and Mexican levels are not very high in that organized generosity. It, it may be that the generosity in the streets and in the families and among the neighbors is very high and that may explain part of that extra Mexican boost. Well, a lot of the examples I gave in my talk related to governments having the nerve to uh, encourage and empower individuals who are running institutions and towns to investigate and develop and implement their own ways of making better lives. I gave examples about elder care facilities where the people there weren't looked after. They were doing the looking after of each other, but that takes a lot of courage 
to do that. Think how a prison would look if it was guards helping prisoners, prisoners helping prisoners, outsiders mixing with the prisoners, preparing for a route back out. Uh, those kind of changes were made in the Singapore prison system and their recidivism rate dropped by a third. It took a lot of courage for the top administrators to take those risks. It took a lot of imagination for the prisoners and the guards to decide they weren't in a business of running crime schools. They wanted to make prisons that in fact produced better lives for the guards, better lives for the prisoners, and better lives for the families and neighbors of these men and women when they got out.